on? We're on. Put this down here. Um, thank you for that. Yeah, um, I am squealing. Feedback, gotta love a fucking bit of feedback. I've, not, I've been ordered not to leave from this little box here. Which I don't like because it, it feels kind of church like and I'm very anti religion and anti Tory, which you're about to all fucking appreciate right now. Um, also, I like our little disco light down here, kindly supported by this shit MacBook Pro. Uh, so if any of you want to rave, help yourself, I will join in shortly. Um, yeah. I was going to say that you're in for a rare treat here, uh, but it's not a fucking treat really, uh, because it, I, I don't often, I, we don't ever talk about work I, that I've done really. I talk about other people's work, you slag it off, uh, <laughs> and talk about other people's work and wish I was them and kind of masquerade and, you know, just generally get envious. And I'm sure you've all been there and you think, oh, bastard, that's really good. Uh, but I never really ever, I always try and avoid talking about my own work, but these fuckers uh, asked me to, or oh, I swear a lot, that, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I generally open with warnings of people with soft ears better fuck off. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> did you all hear that? Uh, yeah, so, I, I, but I am, so it's not, it's not a tree, it's just fucking rare. Uh, I am going to talk about one piece of work tonight, which is a book I've done. I've done quite a few books in my uh, brief but colourful career. Uh, some are absolute dog shit. Some are kind of alright. Some of them sell quite a lot, but you know they could have been better in my eyes. Uh, I've self-published, and I've also worked for publishers who are fucking nightmare. Uh, <laughs> sorry if there's any publishers in the house. Didn't mean that. Come see me afterwards. <laughs> Got some great ideas. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so, in loving memory work is a pretty personal project of mine uh, that I have self-published, uh, and it is as we heard there that it's on the minor strike. I'm gonna take my sunglasses off actually because I look like a fucking man at the Oscars or something. <laughs> um, which is this book? That didn't work, did it? Oh, no, there you go. Fuck me, that's y way. <laughs> Preview. <laughs> that's got to come. That's like piss yellow, isn't it? You ever walk up after a good session and peed and that's been that good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, yeah, that was bad. I heard someone, you know, say our almighty's name then. And yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll second that. But anyway, this is the book I'm going to talk about. It's self-published. And it's about the miners' strike, 84, 85. I was uh, born in 1985. I was born 10 days after the strike ended. Uh, and the miners' strike was a pretty seminal event in our history, socially, politically, and what this book is hopefully a testament of culturally. Um, it, there wasn't really a corner of the fucking earth that it didn't really affect. Um, but it was a pretty personal thing to me, uh, which I'm going to talk about really. Hence the, you know, you've seen, you've seen this, haven't you? You've all seen this. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the miners' strike happened in 84 when the British mining industry was one of the biggest industries in this country producing coal you know, economically sound, despite what the fucking Tories will tell you, um, and employed hundreds of thousands of people across the most diverse range of demographics, you know, not just working class people, yeah, working class people, but there was complementary industries in engineering, in design, in graphic design, you know, the National Coal Board was a massive employer and a massive feeder, and there the were complementary industries that it all fed into, the railway networks, the whole works. And Thatcher and her Tory government in the 80s decided to go for it. Not because it was, they were against coal. Maybe they were. She wanted to build a bomb at the time because she fancied a bit of fucking Reagan's ass. Um, 
And he, and he was pro-fucking nuclear, wasn't he, old fucking cowboy? <laughs> um, but, sorry. <laughs> and, any, any bias in here? No? It's fine, isn't it? It's fine. You're only fucking listening. Um, and it was, it was a big fucking deal, basically, in this country. And it kicked off in 1984 because they decided to accelerate pit closures. And in literally, in two weeks, they wanted to axe, I think it was 250,000 people's jobs across five pits all over the country. One of them was in Yorkshire, which is where I'm from, if you haven't detected the fucking Everdale accent. Um, and it's pretty personal to me because that's my dad getting arrested. Uh, my dad was a miner, my granddad was a miner, my great granddad was a miner. Uh, they all worked down Barnsley pits and. Sorry? Sorry? Who oh, the fuck's talking? Where are you? Sorry? We'll get on to that. Yeah, for a book design talk, you're not fucking, you know. <laughs> invited a fucking pit pony in. <laughs> um, that's my dad. My dad was arrested. He, he, my dad walked out in support of his union on strike. He struck, struck, if that's the right word, for 12 months, the entire duration of the strike. And I just want to put that in perspective. You, can, my dad was responsible for my mum, obviously, uh, and my older sister, five years older than me, my older brother, eight years older than me, and I was in my mum's tummy. You know, he was, he was off work for a year. He had to make him, you know, he had to do something, didn't he? So, I'm a, uh, <laughs> fucking, there's a breeze there, isn't there? <laughs> I ain't farted. Um, you know, that, it's, it's fucking dreadful. But, um, he, yeah, basically, he had a wife and two kids to support, and he was my age then when he was arrested. And he had to go a year without a wage. Now, could you imagine doing that? Just saying no, no money, no benefits, because they cut that from him because he struck. He, he walked out of work in support of his union. The only support he got was from, you know, handouts from neighbours, handouts from, you know, comrades or people from other unions who might want to support. You, you, you think that's the perspective. You go 12 months without any money. But he still was there on every picket, the club together. And this was at Orgreave, one of the, the biggest and most infamous parts of the entire strike, where in Rotherham, just down the road from where I was born in Barnsley, uh, there was essentially a kettling of police. The miners were outnumbered three to one, and they just kicked the fucking shit out of them for just being there to try and stop lorry drivers going in friendly. They'd stand in front and they'd say, this is why we're here don't go in, we're trying to fight for his jobs. A lot of the time, the lorry drivers peacefully reversed and left. The police didn't even let them get near, they just beat the fuck out of them. And my dad was there, and this picture was taken, obviously, as he was arrested. He was at the front of the picket line, his friend fell to his knees because he was hit by a truncheon. My dad knelt down, and this is his story, obviously, knelt down, picked him up by the arms, and a policeman pulled him through the ranks, and he was, gonna, he was up in court, for three years to life, for that, for fighting for his fucking job. So, it is a pretty fucking personal project to me. <laughs> uh, but also, Augury, you know, the miners, this, this Orgreave was six months into the strike, pretty much. Uh, it was a hot summer, you know, the overwhelming thing my dad remembers was these shoes were his, were his dad's, my granddad's, and he didn't want to lose them. He was getting absolutely beaten the fucking shit out, but didn't want to lose his shoes because he feared my fucking granddad a lot more than he did the bobbies. <laughs> um, but the, the, there was one good thing that came out of Orgreave, and that was this image, which is of uh, a female activist, Leslie Bolton, who was just part of Women's Against Pitch. She's just a photographer. You can see her camera in her hands there. Uh, she was just there documenting the day. And as the police in riot gear, which was a new thing in the 80s that the, the Tories pioneered to, you know, act out on the miners, uh, this, this policeman ran up and said, I'll have you, you bitch, too, and decided he was going to absolutely hit her over the head. Luckily, which you can see just here, 
just make out there, if you have a look, a photographer was with her and he, uh, she pulled her out of the way so the truncheon actually missed. But this, this photograph was captured by a guy called John Harris, who was a documentary photographer and he's still doing things like this now. And this was like, for the miners, this was like their Che Guevara. This was their repeatable image. They finally, after year, you know, Murdoch was on Thatcher's side, so every fucking newspaper was anti-miners. My, my dad was an enemy of his fucking country overnight. He was taught he was a thug, apparently. He, you know, he, would, he was engaged in gun crime, knife crime. They were all just complete lies. But this gave the miners something to sort of fight with, really, in a graphic sense. And that is where the sort of the rub of the book comes from. That this, this picture finally gave them that proof they wanted, and the miners just went with it. You know, they loved it because it was the truth. This, this was what was happening, not just there, at every fucking picket that they were at. And they made posters, they made badges, they made t-shirts, they bastardised it in, in a really kind of post-punk kind of fashion. They got hold of that image and they did everything they could to spread that word, to, to, to be creative with it, to do whatever they could to spread the word. And this is where sort of my interest comes into it. You know, my, obviously my family involvement in it makes it quite political and makes it quite involved, but from a designer's point of view, <laughs> you know, this stuff is culturally important. It's been willfully ignored as a, as in, in the political, you know, graphic canon. You can, you can see all those books like Graphic Agitation and they're all fucking Vietnam War and all this. This is a massive part of the British social political landscape and it's been willfully fucking ignored and I thought it was about time that that was readdressed and reappraised and you know the, this kind of punk aesthetic really came through in the 80s in 84, 85 that you know they, they, they took those tools and they used them and I'm really proud to come from that kind of stock you know that kind of that family that upbringing that community uh, most of all because it was unbelievably good for women you know women against pit closures was a massive movement at the time they came out of the you know you, you can all you can imagine the stereotypes a yorkshire fucking pit pony town like mine barnsley guy goes to work down pit comes home 16 hours later wants his fucking tea on the table looks after kids fuck you know that's kind of real life it was a it was a patriarchal thing and suddenly the men were out of work and the women, instead of what Thatcher thought was, right, the women will get them back to work because they've got no money. They didn't. They were like, no, you're fucking right. And they were even more campaigning than the fucking men. You know, my mum now, you know, my, well, it's my dad really, but my dad always says, you know, I'd still be out on fucking strike now if your fucking mum had a way. <laughs> and they're fucking divorced. That is a massive testament, and to all the all the female designers out there, and all the, you know, to sound sexist because she had a penis, but you know, the, the the women in the audience. This liberty was started there, you know. They they raged against that patriarchal society. It's a, it was a horrible thing. It's just how things were. But this is where it fucking started. They they were creative. They got they were activists. They were fucking active. The the title of the book, in loving memory of work, comes from a rosette, the, a, a black flower, when a woman wrote on it, in loving memory work, she threw it on fucking 10 Downing Street. That's where the book title comes from. That's how active they were. They went to London. They, sent, they, you know, they, they were active. It wasn't just soup kitchens. They were raising money. They were on picket lines. They were getting beat up to protect the husbands, to protect the sons, you know, the brothers who were down the pit. And the work is, 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 is true. You know, that poster there, you know, never underestimate the power of women. It's, Fucking right on, damn fucking right. And I, you know, and, and and you know, you can slag me off for being a fucking Yorkie or whatever, and I might be a thick bastard. But you know, they, you know, this is from a little village in Armfort, Doncaster. There's fuck, there's no fucking galleries there. You know, there's no fucking. They've probably got the world's shittiest library, <laughs> right? But they still managed to make a banner. They encapsulated all those things. Not only that, the historic reference to the suffragettes with the purple, with the green. That's not someone who's fucking thick. That's someone who knows what they're doing and they're, they're building on the work of other people. 
And that, that's a big part of what this book is about. The creativity of people that we just, you know, that this middle fucking class industry that is design, and I'll, you know, they, they try and, yeah, we forget about that. Fuck them. Fuck the market people. They're not, they're not that at all. Everyone can have a fucking great idea, and that's a fucking testament to that. And not just a great man can have a great idea, but a fucking great woman as well. And like I said, Murdoch, a twat. <laughs> You know, this was what they had to fucking fight against. Arthur Scargill, there he is. I'll, you know, I'll forgive him his fucking Charlton haircut, Bobby, old, the old comb over. You know, if that, if that was this year, he'd, have, he'd shave his head, wouldn't he? That's the comb over of the fucking millennium. But, you know, this is what the sun tried to do to him. Arthur, the, the, and this, this comes from numerous photographers. This is not just one point of view. This, I've, I've spoke to 50 photographers who documented the strike on both sides for the sun, for News of the World, for the Times for various, you know, left political newspapers. And Arthur used to lead the march, obviously he was the, he was the leader of the NUM, the National Union of Mine Workers, and his, his, his way to get everyone going was he used to go like that with his arm. And every time he did that, there was the fucking spiders ran out from under the carpet, shot every fucking picture they could, and that's what the Sun tried to use with. Now look at the printers union, ran with that. They're not, they're not bothered about fucking putting Sam's tits on the front, of course. <laughs> nah, that's fucking fine, isn't it? Oh, a bit of Hitler, though. Nah. He was a... F he, well, he is a cunt. <laughs> Sorry, that's bad language, but I'd... I'd well, fuck him. Look at him. He looks like a fucking elbow. Um, <laughs> and that is what went. But that's, that's the stage. That's the actual photograph, the, the shot of it. As you do with your fucking iPhone, nah, you burst. And that's what happened. And that's what they were up against. The media completely spun everything. The BBC and the Augury thing earlier, you know, they cut the footage to show that the miners were throwing bricks first and then the police went in and beat the fucking shit out of them. It was the other way around. The police ran in, they bullied them, shoved them to a bridge where the miners then retaliated because there were fucking people bleeding, you know, and locked up just for trying to defend the jobs. But it's not a fucking harbinger of doom here, you know. The thing I'm most proud about this book and this project and my community, my family, my, my sort of piss weak involvement in it is that despite this tremendous hardship 12 months without a wage 12 fucking months 12 months having to go up against this kind of shit 12 months against your neighbour who maybe just works down the road at a bank thinking you're a fucking hooligan you know 12 months of that, that onslaught that victimisation and they still, they fucking still could laugh about it they still had humour, they still had wit, and they, and, they, and they creatively engaged with that struggle. You know, they had something to say, and they fucking said it with what they had, the means to their hands. You know, this is one of my favourite examples. It's a Sally Army door. And that originally said, Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And some miner on his way past in a march thought, I'm fucking having that. <laughs> and it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. You know, we can, we've all had a bit of fucking, get the pungan out, you know. But that's just what you would say, or what I would say, or what I would think. And I've thought that myself, you know, that's just some fucking pit pony on his way past with a banner. And it's not. It's wrong to think that. They were creative people. They had a lot of things, you know, kitchen table creativity is, is massively, it's a massive thing to me, you know. It's the idea in its purest form. I, you can't fucking deny that. God, I want to say this thing, how do I say it? I'll just get the fucking spray paint out. I'll get the paint out. I've got some sh fucking paint in the shed. Get their bed sheet. And this is what they did. They just did, you know, some of them are just kind of daft and kind of really irreverent and like, fuck you, you know. And some of them are really kind of provocative and quite intelligent and really kind of, you know, they, well, they wrenched my heart anyway. Anyway, there she is. You know, this was done by uh, a graphic designer at the time. Uh, a guy called Paul Morton. He was he was based in Barnsley. He was a designer. He had, you know his family wasn't down the pit. It had nothing to do with the pit, but he took it upon himself to be involved. And this was a, a poster and a postcard that he created for the miners. I, I only wish it was like the um, Sea Red Women's Workshop where they wrote to Thatcher and said, "Oh, we fucking love you," you know, a ray for women, first female prime minister, and all that. And then they got a, the official Downing Street photograph and absolutely fucking ran her down. I don't know if it was quite that, but...
but you know this was 1984 before all this all this shit but it, it's one of my favorite pieces in the book because it is just it is a you know it turns that whole tory fucking what's his face fucking churchill bollocks she wasn't fucking churchill at all you know if churchill was wasn't fucking churchill a lot of people think that churchill was fucking great he wasn't he was a fucking twat he was quotable that doesn't make you a fucking good prime minister does it you know, after his fucking speeches that we hear now, he recorded it from his fucking bed, the fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> fucking true. Anyway, but, uh, you know, this, all this stuff came together and it was important for me to represent that in a book uh, because my family was involved. You know, I personally f feel that it was my duty to sort of bring this back into an arena where I sort of had my limited kind of means, you know, this is all I understand, the design of it, the, the sort of the creativity. But, I, you know, I have credence in that, it's there. You can, you can have a look at the book outside, and, you know, I, I would ask you to have a look at the book outside. I'm not saying fucking buy it, it'd be nice if you did. <laughs> but I'll get to that again in a minute. But, you know, if, 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 there's, if, there's any, if you will look at that book and don't think there's an idea in there that you just think, fuck me, that's great, you know, that's worthy. It might look shit. I'm not going to deny that. It might, you know, it might look like they've just done it on the fucking kitchen table. But I ask you, so fucking what? You fucking bourgeois bastards. You, <laughs> were, you, were you fucking hiding behind your fucking computers? You know? It's all hand done. I'm not saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I, I, I appreciate hand, hand done work. Not, not at all. But I appreciate people who have got something to fucking say. And I think a lot of design and a lot of this industry doesn't have something to say. And a lot of the stuff they do doesn't mean fucking anything to them. And I think that's a real fucking shame and a real waste of a lot of the talent in this room. Because you have, I'm not going to say, oh, you have the power to do fucking good. Yeah, you do, but you have the power to do fucking bad as well. And that's a lot of time of what we fucking choose to do because we get a nine to five and we get a wage. My dad could have done that. He could have gone down the pit and earned his nine to five while all his mates were out striking, but he didn't. He chose what he fucking believed in to do that for 12 months. No fucking, nothing. Absolutely nothing. My mum was pregnant with me at the time and she used to have to roll coal dust to throw in the fire to even fucking make the house warm. We went to the social, this is, oh, well, we went, I did, I was in my mum's tummy. Um, and the social services said to my mum, when she was saying, because you know, they cut benefits, she said, I haven't got enough money to feed my two children. And the answer that she got was, why don't you fry your potato skins, because they're pretty nice. Which I think is fucking ridiculous. But this is the book. And it is just, well, of course it's fucking biased. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is what it is, it's a product of my time. But it's about fucking time someone that stood up for them, I think. And from a graphic sense, and the stuff and the work they did deserves respect. You know, I, I was really privileged to be able to work with a lot of people on the sort of top. So you watch that, your, your left. You know, a lot of people, it, it means a lot to a lot of people that I respect, and I know probably a lot of people in this room respect, you know. A, an acclaimed film director wrote the, wrote the forward for it, Ken Loach. You know, Jerry Medella, Turner Prize winning artist, who's also made many, many works about it, wanted to get involved. They, I, you know, I, I didn't fucking give him any money, nothing. And some of them haven't even got a fucking copy of book yet, but, you know. <laughs> <coughs> Keep that to yourselves. <laughs> but people, like I said, people have something to say and they care about it, and that's the fucking important thing. And so the book was produced on that notion that it's a reappraisal of a piece of work and a, a collective body of work. Like I said, a lot of it's shit. It looks shit. It, but collectively, that's what it was about, you know? And we don't have that anymore. A collective body of work that speaks louder than any one individual piece. And that was why I wanted to do the book. And in doing the book, we also, you know, this is where I get my designer hat on. As I said, I'd come to it. You know, you know, Sarah's point, where are you? There you are. Sorry. So, you know, Sarah's point about, you know, trying to select the right typeface for the right project. It was important for me to do that. And, that, you know, they had fuck all the miners. They had typewriters, basically. 
and photocopiers at best from the local library or whatever. So I remember seeing these banners, so we decided to create a typeface for the book because it was just so distinct. I've never seen many things like it at all. And it just cut through all that kind of noise. And it was done by a trade union liaison who was still around today. And this font's available now as well with all proceeds going to the campaign. And we also did this one as well. Jabba's Gab. It's not called Jabba's Gab. <laughs> but this one's based on the back of a banner, which you can see there, rolling out, leading the march, which I think sums it up you know, that, that sentiment, really, you know, they, they, were, they were treated really horrendously when they didn't deserve to be. We, we owe them a lot. I owe them a lot, you know, and I think a lot of people in this room do, whether we sort of, it's not directly, of course, but it's, it's there. And j the, just a little note on the Jabba Scab thing. A bit irreverent, this, but there was one fucking sticker that we could never fucking find in the book. And my dad fucking insisted that he had this on his helmet, and it was a, a sticker that said Jabba Scab. And he was like, I'm telling you, I fucking had it. No one, even miners, they were like, I've never fucking seen it. So I think my dad's made it up, personally. <laughs> but anyway, this, this is called Ferry Moor, which is from that, and that's available as well. And, and I just want to end on one other thing on the book, which is, like the typefaces, I can't... I, when you're doing something like this that means so much to you, I, I find it really hard to sort of say anything more than everything on that page, everything in that entire body of work has to have a fucking reason for being there. If it's superfluous, if it's just there for decoration, be a fucking hairdresser, that's not right, you know. It has to have meaning. It has, this, the, the scariest thing when I did this book and when I published it myself, writ it myself, I sound like Prince, don't I? You know. <laughs> I'm not fucking talent this Prince. Produced, arranged, record, written, etc., etc. by Craig Oldham. Um, no, but when you when you're going through that, I can honestly say the the, 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 the biggest fear of mine wasn't fuck me, am I gonna load, am I gonna is no one gonna buy this? Fuck me, am I gonna lose loads of fucking money? Fuck me, am I gonna get laughed from when people when I do talks like this and, and people just go, <laughs> that's a piece of dog shit, you know. It wasn't that at all, it was just, it was, would my dad, would, did, did I represent my dad right? Did I represent my mum right? Did I represent those, those people that are still fighting now for the job? And still fighting for the, the, the justice that they deserve for being beaten up for just trying to work? The, the sticker... <laughs> <laughs> sniper, I mean sniper. sticker there um, is where all the proceeds of the book go to the All Grieve Truth and Just Justice campaign who are campaigning for justice for those miners that were arrested there were 95 of them on one day my dad was one of them and you know they just want an independent inquiry to figure out why those in power could use the fucking police for their own benefit their own will and much like the Hillsborough campaign, I'm, I'm making this really political, but that, that's where all the proceeds of the book and the typefaces go to. It's not for me. I'm not just, you know, I ain't got a fucking palace up in Manchester. <laughs> uh, I fucking really haven't. Um, and also, to sort of make that point of it, it belonged in the community and it needed to be of the people, for the people. You know, we, we had the idea of using coal within it in somehow and we found a printer brave enough, which I'm sure Park would have done, I'm sure. Um, I just didn't, I didn't know you then, sorry. Um, to put a combustible material through their very hot printers, which was coal. Uh, I gladly forged my insurance documents. I, um, <laughs> but it worked, and we, we managed to use coal to print on the cover, and this is just a little film. Now, do I click for this, or do I just press the arrow? So, this is a film about that. Deep down the mine, it lies in wait For men to come to seal its fate This living coal don't want to die And yet we show it cannot lie Resting place we take from it. 
be means of work and sweat and grit. We cut its heart and move it out. We clean it up, then ship it out. To arms it goes, we are to tear. And yet its fate is oh so near. This living coal just sits and waits for man alone to seal its fate. We scoop it up to light the fire. Its heart it glows for our desire. And when it's dead, we clear it out. Like miners' jobs, its heart ripped out. This living coal that filled our needs Like miners' lives, it's done its deed So that's me, thank you